This is Ray Bradbury. Join me for the next 30 minutes on a tour through time and space. Come along to the far future. Follow me into a strange past with stories that almost could be or might have been. Real or unreal, this is Bradbury 13. Rocket ship sank down towards Planet 7 of Star System 84. They had traveled millions upon millions of miles. Earth was far away, her system and her sun forgotten. And now the rockets of these tiny men could travel anywhere, for the speed of their rockets was the speed of a god. And now they were feathering down towards an alien world. Ray Bradbury's Here There Be Tigers. Driscoll? Sir? Time to touch down? We'll be landing in five minutes. Good. Initiate final landing procedures. Aye, sir. Chatterton, we'll be landing in a few minutes. I heard. Help me unlatch this, will you? What are you doing? My job. But can't you wait five minutes to get that drill out? Listen, Forrester, you have to beat a planet at its own game. Get in, rip it up, mine it, nail it down, hack away at it, and then get out when you have what you want. Otherwise, a planet will fix you good. Well, you're sure about that? You can't trust planets, Forrester. They're bound to be different, bound to be bad, bound to be out to get you. Especially this far off. A billion miles from nowhere. So, you beat them at their own game, is that it? You have to. You've got to tear their skin off, drag out the minerals and run away before the whole thing explodes in your face. That's the way to treat them. You do your ripping, Chatterton. I've got too much respect to treat planets the way you do. You're weak. It's not my business to rape and ruin a planet. What is your business, Forrester? I'm just a rocket man. You're the mineralogist, so you go ahead and do your mining and ripping and scraping. I'll just watch. Just the same. Take your gun along. Sure. In my holster. We're coming in, sir. What do you see out there, Driscoll? See for yourself, sir. I chatted him. Come here and look at this. What? The planet. Yeah. Swell. I, I wonder what it thinks of us. It won't like me. I'll see to it that it won't like me. You really are a hard-nosed mercenary, aren't you? This planet is strictly money for me. That's all. Land us over there, will you, Captain? That looks like iron country if ever I saw it. I I haven't seen grass that green since I was a kid. Yeah. It looks like a, a sea of putting greens. It actually looks soft. If ever a planet was a woman, this is it. Woman on the outside, man on the inside. Don't let cosmetics fool you. How do you know what's underneath it? It's my job, Driscoll. Underneath, it's all iron, copper, uranium, sod. It's male, all right. Uh, you and your earth drill. That's right. This drill can pull out dirt 70 feet deep without even sweating. We'll fix your woman planet, Forrester. Yes, I know you will. Here we go. Strap in. Three, two, one. We're down. That's good. Shut it down, Driscoll. This place is too green. Too peaceful. I don't like it. We'll go out with our rifles. Now, I give the orders, if you don't mind. Fine, give the orders. But don't forget who pays your salary. Not to mention my company's investment of millions of dollars worth of equipment on this ship. I won't forget. 
Kessler? Sir? What's it like out there? Well, let's see. Temperature is 72 degrees. Wind is calm. And the air is... <laughs> the air is perfect. Good fishing weather. Good. Open the forward hatch. Yes, sir. All right. Let's go. <sighs> Smell it, Captain. Yes, it just rained. It's like a giant greenhouse. Look at the grass. There's not a weed in sight. You could play croquet on it. Hey, Chatterton! Come on out and take a look. I'm coming. With this. There's nothing to shoot out here, Chatterton. Unless you're hunting butterflies. It may look peaceful to you, but I... Uh, hey. What is it? An earthquake! It doesn't like you, Chatterton. Don't be stupid. Well, it didn't quake for us. So it must be it doesn't like your philosophy. <laughs> Coincidence, Forrester. That's all. Come on, now. I want that drill out of here and samples dug in a half hour. Now, wait. You've got to clear the area first. Besides, it isn't every day you hit a planet like this. Can you blame us if we want to have a look at it? All right. Let's get it over with. Williams? Sir? You stay here and watch things. We're going to look around. Yes, sir. All right, let's go. It's beautiful. Hey, I brought a baseball and a bat. We'll have a game later. What a diamond. I suppose you want to be team captain? <laughs> <laughs> well, how'd you like the job of mowing all this? I knew there was something wrong. The grass is freshly cut. Now hold it, chatted and... It's probably some sort of dichondra that's always short. Well, I don't like it. If anything happens to us, no one on Earth would ever know. What's he talking about? I'm talking about the search policy. If a rocket doesn't return, don't expect them to send a search team to find out why. Well, that's natural enough. We can't waste precious time searching on a thousand hostile worlds fighting off natives. Every expedition represents years of travel and millions of dollars, not to mention lives. If a ship is lost on a hostile planet, we go on to a peaceful one. Like this. I often wonder what happened to all those lost expeditions on worlds we'll never go to again. They were shot or stabbed or broiled for dinner. Shatterdon! It's time we got back to work, Captain. All right. The area looks clear to me. Let's get back to the ship. Captain, come here. What is it, Driscoll? Put your hands out. Feel it? Remember how you used to run when you were a kid and how the wind felt? Like feathers on your arms. You thought any minute you could lift up your arms and fly, but you never quite did? Sure, Driscoll, I remember. Feel it? You too, Chatterton. What are you talking about? The wind. The wind. You know, we never have really flown by ourselves. We have to sit inside tons of metal, away from flying, really. We've never flown like birds fly, by themselves. You're crazy. Come on, Chatterton, weren't you ever a kid? Sure, but I grew up. Now, didn't you ever want to put out your arms like this and, and run and, and fly? Hey! Hey! I don't believe He's it. flying! He's flying! Look at me! Will you tell him to come down? I'm soaring like a bird! It's fantastic! Ah, look at him! Get down, Driscoll, before you hurt yourself! Here I come! Light as a feather! Are you all right? Oh, did you see me? I flew! Yeah, you sure did! Oh, let me sit down! <laughs> I'm a sparrow. I'm a hawk, so help me. Go on. All of you, try it. I, I, I don't know, Driscoll. It's the wind. It picked me up and flew me. Go on, try it. Let's get out of here. What for? It's a trap. Oh. It wants us all to fly. And it'll drop us all at once and kill us. 
I'm going back to the ship. You wait for my order on that. I asked the wind to fly me, and it did. I'm going to try it. Uh, what? I'll chance it. If I'm killed, all of you get back to the ship. I can't allow this. You what? As captain, you can't risk it. I have some authority here. I say this game's gone on too long. I'm ordering us back to the ship. Holster your gun, Sheridan. Stand still. Oh, all of you. Haven't you felt it? Th this world's alive. It's playing with us, biding its time. You're going back to the ship under arrest if you don't put that gun away. If you fools won't come with me, you can die out here. I'm going back. Drill for my samples and get out. Sheridan! Don't try and stop me! Now don't run! Uh, wait! Don't stop <laughs> there he goes! The wind got him! <laughs> yes, he's flying. <laughs> and is he mad? <laughs> Come on, Chatterton. Admit it. It was perfect, wasn't it? And it was fun flying through the air like an eagle. Mm, it's impossible. <laughs> oh, we all flew Chatterton, all of us. There's only one way for it to do it. Huh? It's alive. <laughs> the air's alive. It picked me up like a big fist, and any minute it could smash down and kill us all. Mm. It's alive. <laughs> all right. All right, Chatterton. Say it's alive. Every living thing has its purpose, right? Well, suppose the purpose of this world is to make us happy. Now, what do you think of that? Impossible. <laughs> hey, look. Here comes Driscoll. Hello down there. Hey, come on in for a landing, Driscoll. Here I come. <laughs> <laughs> I love it! I love it! I'll never walk anywhere again! What have you got there, Driscoll? Canteens. I found a creek and tested for pure water. Wait till you taste it. Chatterton, you like the first drink? No way, Forrester. That's the blood of the planet. No. Drink that and you put this world inside you to spy through your eyes and ears. No thanks. Well, suit yourself. Here goes nothing. Well, wine. What? It's wine. I can't be. No, it is. Smell it. Taste it. Hey, give me that. <laughs> Some sort of rare white wine. French domestic, I'd say. Mm. <laughs> it's poison. Hey, don't worry, Captain. There's plenty more where that came from. That's not all I found. Take a look at this. A fish? Yes. Take it. Notice anything odd about it? Well, it's cooked to perfection. It can't be. Where did you find this, Driscoll? In a stream. I was getting water, uh, uh, wine, from the stream and thinking how hungry I was when I noticed fish falling into a boiling spring. After a few minutes, they floated to the surface, cooked. They're delicious. Mm. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> it's delicious. I brought a whole sack full, enough for everyone. Air Express. Hey, let me see those, Driscoll. <laughs> Leave it. Leave it. It'll poison us all. What are you talking about? Don't you see? There's always a trick to things like this. I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm sleeping in the rocket tonight. Oh. You can stay out <laughs> here if you like. <laughs> you afraid, Chatterton? I saw an ancient map once, Kessler. You know what it said on it? In the uncharted regions, it said, Here there be tigers. Sometime tonight, when you're sleeping out here, the tigers and the cannibals will show up. Oh, well, well, anything would beat the inside of that rocket for another night. I'll go along with you on one thing. This planet is alive. It's a whole race unto itself. There's one thing it lacks. Someone to show off to. And that's why it needs us. I mean, what's the use of a stage full of miracles if there's no audience? I think you're right, Captain. This place needs someone to appreciate its beauty. Mm. Uh, Chatterton, what uh, is it? Uh, oh, my stomach! I'm poisoned! Driscoll, Kessler, how do the rest of you feel? Uh, Fine, me too. Okay. Well, we all ate the same things. This planet's got something against you, Chatterton. But we'd all better eat the ship's food from now on. I think it'd be safer. Let's get Chatterton into the ship. I can do it. And the first thing in the morning, 
I'm drilling. Understand? We've wasted enough time. I'll show this planet. I'll show it. <laughs> Uh, morning, Captain. Driscoll, looks like it rained last night. Yes, it did. But none of our equipment got wet. It seemed to rain all around it. That doesn't surprise me. Uh, Captain, hmm? about Chatterton. Yeah? Isn't there any way to stop him? He's going to rip this place up with that drill of his. Look, there's nothing I can do. He practically owns the expedition. But we don't have to help him. There's a clause in our contract that says we don't have to work under dangerous conditions, like uh, earthquakes. Huh? Oh. So, do under this planet as you would have it do under you. Yeah, sounds good to me. Here he comes now with that robot drill of his. Morning, Captain Driscoll. Fine morning to drill, don't you think? You'll get no help from us, Chatterton. Fine. I'll do it myself. <sighs> Right here looks like a good spot to start. Now we'll see who's in charge here. And fool? There, I'll show this planet. Look at that sod come up. I bet there's enough ore under here to pay for ten expeditions. Captain, look. Something's wrong with the drill. What's happening? What's happening? Look at that, Tristan. You know what that is? It's tar. Tar? Yes, that idiot machine hit a tar pit. It's sinking. <laughs> Someone do something. Oh, help me to move it. It's too late, Shadow. Oh, no. It's sinking. Do something. <laughs> <laughs> It's gone. I'll show it. I'll show this planet. Take it easy, Chatterton. I'll fix it. Look, sit down and have a drink. I'll fix it good. I'll show that it can't do this to me. Where are you going? Back to the ship. Now, wait a minute. I know what to do. Something I should have done yesterday. Captain, you've got to stop him. What can I do? Captain, there's nuclear warheads on the ship. Well, he, he wouldn't. He would. Kessler! Sir? Send a couple of men after Chatterton. Get him before he gets to the ship. Oh, yes, sir. Kessler, he's in the forest and he's armed. We'll bring him back, sir. He ran. But we'll fly. Hurry, Kessler. Range back. Yeah. But notice it's not raining on us. It was raining behind and ahead, but not on us. We'd never have to build a house here. The planet protects us. There's only one more thing this world needs. <laughs> yes, and I've thought about that. We'll have to go looking. Well, it's logical, you know. The wind flies us, the trees and streams feed us. Everything is alive. Why shouldn't it provide companionship? You know, I've been thinking about that, too. We're all bachelors. Been traveling for years and uh, getting tired of it. It might be nice to settle down somewhere. Maybe here. With this weather and food, you don't even have to work for anything. I'd be boring. We'd go crazy. No. If life got too soft, all we'd have to do is repeat a few times what Chatterton said. Here there be tigers. Listen. Wasn't that a tiger? I tell you, this world is a woman who'll do anything to please her guests. As long as we're kind to her. Yes, and Chatterton wasn't kind. Here come the men. Well, where is he? We found tracks, sir. In the forest over there. Did you follow him? They weren't his tracks, sir. They looked like a big cat. Maybe a lion or tiger. And next to him, we found a few drops of blood. Chatterton? I don't think we'll ever see him again, Captain. Ah. 
<sighs> it's so peaceful right now. Yeah. It reminds me of when I was a kid. My brother and I waited for the hottest night in July, and then we slept on the courthouse lawn, counting the stars. That was the best night of the year, of my life. I'm not counting tonight, of course. I keep thinking about Chatterton. Don't. Come on. I've rested long enough. We've got to take off. Why? We can't take the chance of staying here another day. I don't mean the danger that got to Chatterton. I mean, if we stay here another day or two, we'd get to like this world too much. We'd never want to leave. I don't want to leave now. And it doesn't want us to leave. Of course, if we go back to Earth and tell everyone what it's like here, they'd come ruin it all. No, this planet wouldn't allow that to happen, somehow. But we'll go back to Earth and lie. Tell them it's a hostile place. Tell them what happened to Chatterton. Funny thing, though, I, I'm not afraid. Chatterton died, but this world trusts us. And we trust it. Last night, I had a dream. There was a, a group of hills and a stream. And there were beautiful women standing by the stream. Yes, yes. And these beautiful women were alone with no men. They had produced the race, but the men had vanished thousands of years ago. And these women would make fine wives and, and raise beautiful children and families. We all had the same dream, Captain. Captain, let's stay. Let's never go back to Earth. They'll never come and investigate what happened. They'll think we were destroyed here. What do you say? It'd be nice. But we've got our job to do. People invested in our ship. We owe it to them to get back. It's such a nice night. Now come on, let's get aboard the ship. Captain? Driscoll, get aboard. Yes, sir. Be sure you get all the equipment pa What is it? An earthquake. It doesn't want us to leave. Get to the ship. Watch out! The ground's opening up! Get the hatch open! It's done, sir! Keep trying! said we were going to leave. None of this would have happened. I know. We could turn back, sir. I'm afraid not. Look down there. Cyclones, volcanoes, hurricanes. She was a woman, all right. Waiting for visitors for millions of years. Preparing herself, making herself beautiful. She put on her best face for us. She sure did. When Chatterton treated her badly, she warned him a few times, and then when he tried to ruin her beauty, she eliminated him. She wanted to be loved, like every woman, for herself, not for her wealth. And we turned our backs on her. Yes. Now she's the woman scorned. She let us go grudgingly, but we can never come back. Captain. Yes, Captain. It's uh, a little late to tell you this. But just before we took off, I was in charge of the airlock. I let Driscoll slip away from the ship. He wanted to go. I couldn't refuse him. 
He's back there now on that planet. I'm glad. I'm glad one of us had the sense to stay. But he's dead by now. No, I, I don't think so. I mean, that display down there is for our benefit. Maybe it's just a grand illusion. Underneath all that chaos, Driscoll is quite safe and alive. Because he's her only audience now. Oh, she'll spoil him rotten. He'll lead a wonderful life while we're slugging it out up and down the system looking for, but never finding a planet quite like this again. No, we won't try and go back and rescue Driscoll. I don't think she'd let us anyway. Not now. Full speed ahead, Kessler. Make it full speed. There Be Tigers was adapted from the story by Ray Bradbury. Featured in the cast were Max Robinson, Bruce Newbold, Michael Drury Beck, Tim Eisenhart, and Jeff Rader. Original music by Roger Hoffman and Greg Hansen. Production assistant was Patrick Mead. Associate producer was Jeff Rader. Bradbury 13 was created, produced and directed by Mike McDonough. Executive producer was Dean Van Eitert. This is Paul Fries speaking.